Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Cool. Well, Truth Seeker, thank you so much for, for joining me on Spirit Science Live today. Heck yeah, man. We had such a good talk on, on my show. I was like, why not, man? We definitely got to continue with it and sit. We could have exactly. kept going. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, we could pretty much treat this as like part two. And for anybody who's listening who wants to tune into part one, just go and check out the podcast that we did on Truth Seeker's channel. And so I guess just like as that as a good like framework, a, a good place to start, I would just ask, um, you know, why don't you just take a moment and share with everybody listening? Like, who are you? What is your work? And what do you do? And, and why? For sure, for sure. So um, I go by the name of Truth Seeker and um, my spiritual esoteric hip hop artist uh, started out kind of as that. Um, now I do, um, i am got a book out. So I just put out my book in October, which is Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God. Uh, forward by Jordan Maxwell, good friends with him. He's really encouraged me on my journey over the years coming out of religion uh, with the spiritual music that I've, I've done. Um, um, I started out doing gospel music. So I started out as a gospel rapper. And so did that and traveled as a Christian evangelist for years. And um, until like my awakening started going a little bit deeper and having uh, different experiences, uh, reading things in the Bible that you don't really hear them talking about on Sunday morning sermons, um, studying the, a lot of the ancient texts that were taken out of the Bible. And all of this stuff uh, linked in with my own spiritual awakening, just started going deeper and deeper and deeper. So a lot of that stuff came out in my music, came out of my beliefs, came out of my conversation. And so finally found myself just kind of stepping into this spiritual awakening, but not really knowing where it would end as a Christian minister talking about UFO experiences, um, aliens, uh, plant medicine, all of these things as my spirituality began to uh, unfold. And so that kind of led to like a dark night thing, just trying to figure out who I was outside of my identity as a Christian hip hop artist, a Christian minister to really come into my own. Cause um, that was so hard. Cause like that, that literally was my ego, my identity of like, you loved me, you knew who I was because of what I did not who I am kind of thing. So um, all, all that was happening um, kind of came to a head, I would say around 2012. And so um, really just been on, on this, just walk and this journey, being, uh, owning my story and helping people um, find their way in their path and encouraging one another, just being that open book so that people don't feel so alone and isolated no matter where they are. Yeah. Wow. I mean, this, the, this, the journey that you're on, and the story is, I think it's one that really resonates with a lot of people, especially like even in the, the spirit science audience, you know, there's a lot of people who came from such a, you know, that, that very orthodox, you know, traditional Christian or otherwise, you know, teaching and everything like that. And that's one of, one of the things I really liked about your work is that you provided a platform for people to just like engage or listen to or tune in to something else and you really like being that you were a minister too you know it's it's such a relatable story but you you kind of have that sense of authority of you're like yeah i i, I did you know i did that and now look at this other realm that you know we can explore <laughs> and so i wonder just like i'm curious to ask based on all of those different subjects i mean i, I and we'll probably go into all of them right like the the occultism and the you know the the all the different spiritualities and angels and demons and um, everything like that. Like what is your, the most passionate thing that you're excited to talk about as it relates to all of these things, like for your awakening, like what is your passion in that sense? Um, my faith in Christ, my faith uh, with that experience of who the world calls Jesus Christ, you know? And so when I was at my lowest, that was like my beacon of hope that when I reached out to God, like Jesus reached back out to me and really pulled me out of a dark time of my life. And so um, why that's still passionate, because it's still, that was my foundation uh, from day one, um, but it still is today. And so why I'm passionate about it is because like, I feel like I, I still need that grace. I still need that, that love in my life. That is the empowerment of anything that I build of any plant ceremony of any song of any writing or whatever is through that love of universal love of Christ. And so that is still the foundation of everything and anything that doesn't, um, is not built upon that 
is for me is an idol. You know what I'm saying? If it's not out of love. And so um, with my journey, um, I've been told that I kind of had to leave the Jesus thing at the door. You know, what, are you going to be a Christian or are you going to be a new ager? Are you going to be this or are you going to be that? It's like, no, I'm, I am me. This is my story. And this is my relationship with the creator through that person of Jesus. And so um, it still holds true today because I'm able to help people who are kind of being told that they need to make that ultimatum, that they have to kind of give up the religion of their fathers uh, because you're not a Christian anymore, because you went to a plant ceremony, because you're talking to aliens, because you believe in reincarnation now. Now you're not, you're not one of us. And so to kind of stop them at the door and say, hold on, like that, that's not it. So I'm letting people know that a lot of this stuff, the interesting thing, a lot of it's in the Bible. And we didn't even know that it was because we didn't know how to study. We would read over stuff and it would just seem so foreign, but spirit contact, ghosts, communicating with the dead, aliens, light ships, hearing voices, psychic abilities, all of that stuff is in the Bible. So the religious community, when I, when they hear me talking about that stuff, they get kind of like, they get kind of scared, you know, but for the Christian who was having these kind of experiences where ghosts are coming to them, their ancestors, aliens, UFOs, whatever it is, now they find this safe space to talk to. So uh, to talk to me in this place of me not having to abandon that faith in Christ to still be a Christian, but still be a mystic at the same time. And so I'm just helping people feel comfortable in their skin. And so I think that that's why the Christ thing is is so, so near and dear to my heart, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's really beautiful. I appreciate just like the truth and passion from which you speak on these subjects. It's, uh, it's, it's, I think I, I, I just love that you went straight to Jesus and you went straight to Christ there because for so many people, I mean, this is even again, like relating it just with the comments and stuff and spirit sciences, I'll get a lot of people commenting often be like, you know, this is all blasphemy turned to Jesus. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I have Christ in my heart. I, you know, this is, that's a, it's a big thing for me and but it's like the way that that i experience christ maybe not is the same way that they experience christ right so i actually this is perfect because i had it on my list of i wanted to talk to you about uh, are you familiar with a book or the concepts found within the jesus mysteries thesis no I, i'm not um, i have not so the the jesus mysteries uh or jesus mysteries thesis is basically this like um it's it's a book or a, a, a book series that really explores this interesting phenomenon where when you look back, uh, you know, in ancient times and you look at uh, the stories about Jesus and the life of Jesus, many of the, you know, it seems as though many of these things that he did were attributed to other deities or gods or beings spanning back for the you know previous few thousand years into the ancient Greek and ancient Egyptian mystery schools. And that even spans into Persia and other places around that, the Mediterranean at the time. And we even see a few concepts like that in India. And so um, the idea is that I, what they're presenting is this theory that's like, well, you know, actually, historically speaking, and you can even like, we can look this up on Wikipedia. It even says the historical accuracy or the historical evidence of Jesus is that all historians pretty much agree that he lived, but there is actually very little, if, if any, evidence of his actual physical existence, except for all of these stories. And the idea suggests, or the theory suggests that perhaps the, you know, whether, whether there was an actual physical person of Jesus or not, that a lot of the, you know, uh, miracles and uh, stories that were attributed to him really were just, you know, cut and pasted from different, you know, it was, it was the evolution of the mysteries which fused with Judaism. Like it was basically taking Greek mysteries and Egyptian mysteries and like the mystery schools in general. And then the Jews kind of adopted that and made their own mystery school. Uh, and, and that Jesus was the, you know, the crown figure of it. And so I, I wanted to ask you, like, what are your thoughts on that? And like, how do you experience Jesus? Cause you know, you described that like the person of Jesus, you know, reached into your life in this way. Um, and much like it is for, for, anyone I think experiencing this in this world um, at least today is that this is like a very powerful inner experience but it's not like the physical guy walked up into your you know knocked on your door hey I'm Jesus and he starts floating and you're like holy shit yeah. you know it's not quite like that so yeah with all of that like just what's what's your take yeah I mean it's a lot to be said like I'm really big into you know having the modality having the ritual having the grid of your spirituality and so whatever that, that shows up, like you have to pick one, 
you have to pick what you know, people don't like the word religion, but you got to have a grid and you're doing a good job at combining a lot of these things and doing the spirit school and things like that, the mystery school. And so you got to have a foundation. And like so many of us in the spiritual movement, we're like, we're just here a little. We like some Mayan stuff. We like some Christian stuff. We like some Greek stuff. And we just kind of make our own. But th- there are stuff within these traditions that, and, and I think you can pick and choose, but some of the, we have to pick one. So to think that like Jesus or this stuff is like plagiarism of, from these other gods or plagiarism from these other religions. Listen, if you can, if you have those books for the e- Egyptians and you know how to go through the temple mysteries and you take the trips there and then you have a, a Egyptian meditation and if you can, if you can embody these principles and it's working, like, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So the thing about it is like Christianity, as far as my concept of stepping into this relationship with Jesus, we have a whole bunch of different, like, uh, like a rule book, I guess, if the scripture would be, but then we have like, um, like we have examples of prayer, how to pray, like, like prayers that work, uh, like how do prayers travel once they leave your body, burning incense while you pray, meditating, fasting, uh, praying in tongues, glossialia. Like it's a lot of religions do these things, but as far as like, I've never been taught like African culture, how to leave my body and and let that another spirit speak through me. I'm sure you can, but the thing about it, we have to pick one. Like when you become a Mason, you have to pick a religion. You have to have this deity that you, you can connect with. It doesn't matter his name. That, that means nothing. But there are some rules and some things for you to connect. So for me, the reason I've, I've held on to the Jesus thing is because it, 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 is my, it is my grid. It is my way to connect. Again, we, on my show, we talked about how Jesus is like light, the highest vibrational form of light. Well, you, can, you need to have the opposite of that. The yin and the yang both exist. So we need to have a Satan figure. We need to have a devil, even if that's not his name. Even if his name's not Jesus, if it was Yahshua ben Yosef or Yeshua, we got to have these archetypes within that help the human psyche connect with something outside of themselves, which is really something within themselves. So we look at these figures. We look at Jesus, who was love that became a person. We look at the devil and then the angels and the saints and the prophets and the beings. All religions have them, right? These, the, the, the destroyer, this person represents the, the destroyer of mankind. And this is the person who's the savior, the Messiah figure. So when it comes to that, I'm not, I'm not against it. I'm not even against the fact that um, maybe some of the stuff was borrowed. It was definitely borrowed. Like they definitely took stuff from a lot of religions and put them together, but they all did. They all copied and borrowed from one another through the artwork, the iconography, the ways of worship. So um, I'm not against it, but the thing about it is like when you go into that that place and you live a life like Christ that is uh, dedicated to love, to showing grace, to showing peace to people who don't deserve it, like it's different if you deserve love, you know, then there we got badges for you. We got awards for you because you're a good person. But Christ comes to sit with the lowly, with the prostitutes, with the tax collectors, with the drunkards, those who were the rejects of society. And he comes to say, listen, there's something special within you. And I'm going to call it out. I'm going to hang out with you because I'm just like you. So to understand that that's how Christ moved on the earth. That's I'm that person. I'm that drunkard. I'm that whore that needs a savior, right? That's me. So that story resonates with me. And it's not just me. It's a story that if you put faith in it, faith comes into play. If you resonate with that story, that there is someone who loves you, your parents might've given up on you. Your uh, teachers always look down upon you. You'll never be nothing, but God sees something special within you. I can't help but resonate with that. And it does something for me. So whether if that's Islam, whether that is the Kabbalah, whatever it is, the mystery school that you connect with your, your source, I'm for it. And so I champion that, that love work, that acceptance, that forgiveness, and going through that alchemical process, which is what fuels everything is that love. Mm. Wow. That was some- I hope that, hope that explained you, kind of a couple of questions in one. Yeah, you dropped some wisdom bombs there in there. That was great. So I, I guess in a way what you're saying is that it doesn't really matter what you know religion you 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 ascribe to or what spirituality you practice. Um, 
because all the roads kind of lead up the mountain. But, it, you know, when you when you make that connection, like go into it wholeheartedly, like if it's the ancient Egyptian or if it's Indian or if it's, you know, uh, or, or if it's Christianity or if it's some other, you know, maybe a, like a Native you American. made it up. If you made it up you know, yourself. Flying spaghetti works. monster. Exactly. That works for some people. <laughs> it's, it's about, it's just, it's about the connection with something that's yeah. higher and beyond and very loving. And I, and I, I get what you're saying too, is like the, the story of Christ is, you know, even if it borrowed and drew from other sources, like it is its own complete system that you can work with and follow and, yeah. and be a part of. Right. Yeah. yeah. You can grow there, in it. You can go deeper. You can kind of like deviate on the path of which sect you want to go with. And I'm, and I'm cool with that. If, if, if you, I don't know a lot of like, there's not a lot of modalities and stuff for so a lot of it's lost. It's a mystery. It's a mystery school. We're trying to bring it back. You know, there's definitely echoes of it in Christianity and um, you know what I'm saying? Um, the Kabbalah and things like that. The Jewish mystics definitely had a piece of it. So the thing about it is everybody wants to go back to the original, the truth seekers. We got to go back to the first one. If Jesus is a, a plagiarism of something else, let me, take me to the next one. Okay, well, then we got, um, you know, Roman Catholicism. Okay, where'd that come from? Okay, well, they mixed these religions together. Okay, where'd they come from? Okay, well, they came from Egypt. Okay, where'd that come? Well, you know, Egypt came from Sumer. They got a lot of their stuff from Sumer. We got to go to Sumeria. Okay, teach me the religion of the Sumerians. What did they believe? Well, you know, they believed in these aliens who weren't really personal. And they, it's like, we keep trying to get back to the original one and in that pursuit, we're not doing any of them. You're not connecting. You're not meditating. You have no truth. Pick one. I don't care which one it is. They all work if you work them. The system works if you work, work it. And so there's beautiful people. There's books. There's stuff out there that will lead you and help you and guide you into that. But you got to pick one. You know, that you, you're like a dog chasing its tail trying to find the right one. And you never find it. You're just after that truth and that pursuit. Pick one and do it, man. Or pick them all and do it. Make your own. Again, there's stuff that we do that's outside of Christian culture and stuff like that. That like I love the the plant ceremonies and 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 look in and that, those kind of things and and how much beauty that it imparts and stepping back into nature. And so mix a little bit of it up. They're all mixed up in together. We're trying to make sense of this. And I think you're doing a really good job with, with all the work that you're bringing to the table. And I'm trying to do that as well to the, for the Christian community, for the most part. There's so many people who are, again, in religion, but they're having these encounters there. And I'm just trying to tell them, look, it's not bad. Like, it's not bad that you're, you, you're drawn to UFOs, ufology. I mean, it's not bad that you are drawn to, you really believe in reincarnation and there's some things that prove it to you. So I'm just trying to fi- help people find a grid, even in that Christianity for past lives, for spirit communication with your ancestors who came before you. Like that stuff's in the Bible. You never hear this in a Sunday morning sermon. No, definitely. And the, the one I wanted to bring up even there too, is that reincarnation is like in the Bible. Like when Jesus yeah. was asking his followers, like, who do you think that I am? <laughs> I'm, I'm paraphrasing. They're like, you're the reincarnation of Elijah or something yeah. like that. And it was yeah. just like, well, if, if they didn't, if reincarnation's bunk, why would they be saying that yeah, to just, Jesus? Just right? made it up. <laughs> you just throw it in there. Um, but now, okay, so there's so many places we could go with this, and I yeah. really want to ask you about, you know, like when, when Christians generally, the Orthodox Christianity comes up against the UFO phenomenon. There's, there's often a well, I, maybe, maybe there's some shifting because even the Pope has started to acknowledge, you know, like yeah. UFOs, and Space stuff. Brothers, Space Bros. But now, how fair. does how, how does, um, in your mind, in your, in your understanding, how does Jesus, who is the sort of like universal savior, fit into the alien phenomenon? Because this is, this is where there always is this thing of like, well, is, does every planet have their own Jesus? Is Jesus yeah. visiting every planet? You know, like, <laughs> there's, there's that whole thing. And I'm just yeah. very curious what you think about that. Yeah, I mean, we we hear that a lot. And then the people who are getting it, even the Christians who are getting into it, then you got to, you have to have an answer. You got to make something up, even if you don't know. Um, So with with the Christ thing in in, in aliens, messengers, um, God's messengers, they're, they're, they're a form of the angels, the watchers, they're watching over humanity. And so they've been here since the beginning, since we were primitive. Uh, since we were just f- figuring out what fire is, the earliest cave arts, you, you, people were drawing these ships that would come in and these beings that would teach them. So for me, there is a little truth in a little bit of all of it. So when we go back to the, the aliens who seated us here, 
there's some there's some truth to that, I believe, especially going back to the Bible. I'm sure you're familiar with the, the word God uh, in, in Genesis being plural, meaning more than one. It says in the beginning, the Elohim created mankind. And when you add that heme on there, it's meaning more than one. So it's saying the gods created mankind. So the alien thing really to, to seek it out, it would be these entities that that a supreme being sent here to create mankind and to interact with mankind. They've been here since the beginning. They're watching over us. If they wanted to destroy us, they would have did it a long time ago. Um, so playing into some of those scenarios, the Zachariah Sitchin and stuff um, in the Bible, it, they would really refer to them as the Elohim or we call them the, the Elo. And it's another translation that talks about the divine counsel of, of, of God's. So the council of the Elohim. So it talks about these different entities or these beings that were over different regions over the earth. And so that, that would, would watch over humanity. These were watchers. And so figuring out who, who these entities were, that they were in on the creation process, that they're watching over us. Uh, you know, the legend and lore talks about, you know, the gods and how they rebelled and started receiving worship for themselves and how they kind of went against the original plan. And so things changed. But when it comes to those, those what we would call aliens or UFOs and things like that, um, the Bible, when it talks about heavens, the heavens, it's the same word for sky. And it says, behold, I gazed into the heavens and saw a scroll. Behold, I gazed into the heavens and I saw the chariots of fire. Like what is a chariot of fire in the night sky? Gazing into the heavens. It's talking about what we would call UFOs, unidentified flying objects or an my case, I would say an IFO, they're identified, they're the chariots of God. The Bible talks about the fiery chariots and the fiery seraphim, which are these beings that travel back and forth from heaven to earth, from the sky to earth, that carry messages, they carry essences. There's all types of angels, messengers in between that look like all types of things. The book of Enoch says that when they're in heaven, when they travel the multiverse, that they look like fire. That's the only way they can travel. If they slow down, then they become matter and matter can't, can't travel that fast. So in the heavens, they're made out of God's fire. But as they will, they can travel to earth and take upon bodies and look like men and carry messages to mankind and deal with people righteously. So we can see them. Like You can get that connection. You can meditate. You can talk to God, the supreme power, whatever. Ask to see one. I've been, I've, I've had fleet of UFO, what we would call UFO, appear to me in the night sky, in the day sky. They show up and say, hello, I've brought people out with me before. Um, and it's that. It shows you that this stuff is real, that it's not just some make-believe happening all within our consciousness and it's just got like God doesn't hear you or it's not real or maybe heaven's a place that you go when you die. But know that that there is a place outside of our atmosphere, out past the stars, where these angels, these entities live that travel back and forth from heaven to earth. And the Bible and many other ancient texts talk about how they carry the prayers and how they show up and there's battles in between and stuff like that. So when it comes to the Bible and UFOs, there's a lot to be said about that. Mm. Wow. Uh, so would you say then that that like, saying you know the the general term of you know move that these you know these beings moving from heaven to earth like the heavens is like anything that is not on this planet yep. so so does that imply also that every alien species out there who's coming here in a ufo is benevolent that they're i, I would think so um just with my uh what, what my understanding is through reading of the scriptures and then having my own encounters um is that the fact that um, fallen angels are in the Bible, but you got to understand what did fallen angels do? They fell. Where did they fall from? They were kicked out of heaven. You got to understand that the heavens is the sky. They were kicked out of the sky. Demons or fallen angels don't fly around in your night sky, abducting people and going off planet and coming back, picking people up and stuff like that. There are fallen angels. There are demons. They're not out there. Guess where they are? They're here. They're down here with us. The spirits of the fallen angels and their children are here dealing with mankind, uh, coercing them to do evils and all types of things that's coming out even in social media and the news is sh shining the light on a lot of wicked stuff that's going on in the government. And it says that they tried to influence leaders. They were kicked out of heaven. 
So from my study, my research, and my own experiences, there's a level of, of um, enlightenment. There's a level of spirituality, a level of integrity, of love that you must have to take your place amongst the stars. Uh, humanity as, as a collective, we are evolving. We are ascending slowly but surely. The collective evolution, as we come together and have our own supernatural experiences and our own awakening, it's happening on a global level as well. So with the, with the micro, we have our own spiritual awakening, but more and more and more people are leveling up, accepting love, calling BS on our leaders, calling BS on the way things are, are ran. So we're leveling up so that we can take our place amongst the stars. We can't go there. They, they're kicking us out. We're police in the skies. And uh, with, with anything that's going on with the evil entities, there's no evil out there, in, in, my, in my opinion. I know there's other people who would, who would uh, question that and stuff like that, but I feel like everything that we've seen has shown that the, the evil is here with our leaders and the things that they're feeding us and um, what they're doing to people, what they're doing to children. There's so much wickedness here. So to think that it's being influenced from from out, out of space, my, all of my encounters, my, the downloads, if you will, the telepathic communication, it's all been beautiful. And as people are being open and honest with their stories who have had very similar uh, experiences. And I think that there's a lot to be said. You don't even hear even the term abduction anymore, or like people are like contactees. People are experiencers now. Now they, they want an encounter. They're asking for them. So like, you know, in, in the early days, they had all of this fear propaganda out there that would scare us away. If we seen a light coming down out of the sky, we're going to run because we think that it's a demon. Um, but I will say in, across the board in Christianity, most of them will tell you that they're demons. And so that's why I kind of go on that little rant, which is the, is the idea that aliens are demons. They're not angels. They're, they're demons coming here to abduct you, to possess you. That's the Christian understanding of it, but I don't think it's correct. Right. Well, even the concept of demon in Christianity evolved out of the Greek word for like daimon or daemon, yeah. which was, you know, like a tutelary deity or like a supportive, you know, spirit guide of, of sorts. Um, I actually, I want to, I want to ask you about, you know, healing all of the, you know, the demons, the darker energies that are here. But before I get into this, just in like the last little thing about this whole like alien thing, I just want to ask, um, based on everything that you just said, would you, do you, do you sort of subscribe to, or to have any sort of say this way or that about the origins of humanity, you know, uh, looking at like going back to like the whole Sumerian thing, or even, yeah. you know, as it says in the Bible, potentially created by these, you know, gods, or maybe, you know, there's a lot of theories that stitch in and stuff. And we've explored this in the Sumerian epic about like humans were really created as out of like a synthesis or a fusion of like Homo erectus or like the previous model of human and the, and then, you know, the Anunnaki or whatever, or, you know, these in other the garden. Of beings. Yeah. Right. In the garden of Eden. Do you, do you think, do you, is there some substance there? Like what? I think so. About it? I think so. So, um, for, my study has led me into the, the work of Zachariah Sitchin early on but also to a, a Christian um, teacher by the name of uh, Dr. Michael Heiser, um, right. who, yep. who, who has a website, oddly enough, called SitchinIsWrong.com. But yes. I would say explore those two sides with the ET thing and the alien thing going on. And, and I feel like the truth is right there somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah. So to, the whole thing of understanding that like we were created to be slaves and, and, and that kind of thing, um, so within some of those Sumerian tales, they even talk about like that there's an, a creator God that the Anunnaki looked up to or were being controlled by, if you will. So um, it's definitely along the lines of, of that essence of the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, that that it is. It's not just some dead, uh, empty religion that that we're here to to work. But I feel like there's even truth to that with our leaders now. Uh, and maybe even being, uh, you know, the seed of the serpent. I mean, we're getting into so much stuff uh, that said that they would be put enmity between the, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And in the end, they would have this battle. So um, I, I feel, I really feel like the people that are watching over us, the people that they're wicked, man, I, I feel like a lot of it's coming out, but I feel like help comes from above. I think that, um, um, you know, there's, I'm sure you've seen it. There's footage of what looks to be like UFOs coming down into the Earth's atmosphere. And then there's plasma 
uh, lasers being shot up at the at them and to make them turn around and leave and trying to shoot these objects out of the sky. And now we have Space Force, which we knew for years. Now they're telling us that we're um, policing the skies, but uh, I don't think the bad guys are out there. I feel, really feel like they're here. So with all of it, I, feel, I do feel like there's a, a little bit of truth to all of it and it's somewhere in the middle for sure. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, for everyone listening to it, you know, if you go down that rabbit hole with Sitchin and then going to Sitchin is wrong, there's actually, I mean, we've explored this in the Sumerian Epic, but there's even a, a document and some research uh, kind of debunking the debunker. And there's like a Heiser is wrong article <laughs> and things that are written because, because Michael Heiser uh, is actually a very traditional Orthodox Christian. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a lot of the hit, you know, his research supposedly trying to fit those stories to match his belief so you really we uh, for everyone listening to i mean we've i've had to go down this path too of like really like double check triple check everything because there's often even with sitchin's work there's a lot of stuff that appears to be stretched or not in there this and that and um you know a lot of theories that he comes up with that are not exactly um uh potentially as you know credible in the actual sumerian text themselves but you can read the sumerian tablets online as well um, you know, one of the things you described here too, like just on this UFO, uh, and us like, you know, f- shooting them away. That's very interesting. I hadn't heard of that before. Uh, but there was, um, there's a, 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 a retired command sergeant major named Bob Dean, um, who actually, I think he passed away in the last several years, but, uh, in like 2009 and in and around that, like late first decade of the 2000s. He actually, like, he retired from, you know, being in the military, and he started speaking openly about the government programs, the UFO programs, and the, all of the information and evidence that they had. And he said that there was, th- there was this one story that was so fascinating, where he was at, I think it was his son's uh, retirement from being in the Navy for many years. And so there was, like, tons of just, like, captains, generals, you know, sergeants, and all these, like, really high-ranking military people who were at this event, both, you know, active and retired. And that this one, uh, he said he was a a plasma physicist or a plasma fusion physicist or something like that, um, who was a retired uh, Navy scientist who came up to Bob Dean at this event, and he said, hey, listen, you're, I know you, you're that guy who talks about the UFOs who used to be a command sergeant. He's like, yes, indeed I am. And he's like, well, listen, I've got this crazy story I have to tell you about for the last like five years, like I just retired, but for the past five years before now, I've been working uh, for, you know, this like top secret government program that's outside of Las Vegas, you know, a secret location, kind of like area 51 thing. And he said that um, he was working on this, he was, you know, plasma fusion physics, and he was working with two people who were not from here, you know, the way that he said it. And he was like, they're from somewhere else. He's like, they were lovely guys, really nice. And after, and he's like, I worked with them for like, you know, like several years. And after a while, after a few years of working with them, at one point I got up the courage and I said, so listen, what do you really think of us like humans as a species? And they were like, well, straight up, since you asked, uh, you, you know, you're kind of a dangerous, barbaric, and, you know, kind of um, very behind, you know, evolutionary speaking wise as a species, like you're, and you're kind of barbaric and dangerous was like this bottom line. And he was like, holy crap. Um, and, and the other guy, you know, the other alien who was there, he kind of leaned in, he was listening. He's like, and you kind of smell bad. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and he, he explained too that it wasn't necessarily just that we smell bad physically, although we have polluted the earth to an exceptional degree. So I think there's some of that, but that we have a psychic smell about us we have like this you know like our our thoughts our emotions our vibratory energy that we give off is at such a level of density that we actually are we we don't quote unquote smell very good you know we have a we have an energy about us that's very unpleasant to these these aliens so i i just wanted to share the story because i think it's very interesting that even you're describing like they're they're trying to come down and we're like blasting them out and you know like trying to keep them at bay and it's almost as if we're resisting help. We're resisting, you know, this support that, that, you know, these angels, these messengers, these, you know, alien guides, whoever and whatever they, they might be, might be able to offer us a lot of value and, and help. But we're like just, you know, almost purposefully staying oblivious to it. And of course, there's, you know, the, the government and, you know, military and stuff are actively keeping that at bay. Yeah. 
but there's something to be said too about like you know our global interest there are certainly a lot of people that talk about it and are interested in it but um it it's not making you know the headlines every single day in people just being like no tell us right now you know yeah um I think disclosure happens from the sky. You know, I think disclosure happens from enough people, enough people waking up. Like I know he's a very, uh, I guess, controversial character, but early on the work of Dr. Stephen Greer, um, mm. helped me out to go out on my own, to make contact and go out under the stars by myself and meditate and fast and ask for an encounter. So looking at the work that he's been doing as well, um, with, uh, the CE five contact initiative, uh, especially with the documentary that just came out that was amazing. Um, people are going out having their own experiences. So we don't need it to come from the White House lawn. You can actually go out, do the CE5 initiative and make contact. Now, versus your theology, what you believe that is, again, many of the Christians will say those are demons coming down to talk to you. Be careful. Um, but from my study and my experiences, it's been something that's beautiful. There's creativity that's imparted. There's songs, there's awe, there's wonder, there's God is real, that the spirit world is real, that God hears our prayers, that they know what we're thinking, like there are our creators and things. So it's more of a loving relationship for me. And I, and I encourage other people, like if you want to find out what works, just do it. Like if, if it's the UFO CE5 thing, I'm nobody special. Like I've seen a lot of stuff, dude. Like I've, I've literally fleets of UFOs. Like you can do it too. You just got to stay out there for a while. You might have to go every day for a couple of weeks, couple of months. You have to, they have to like want to know that you want to see and that you, you know, I don't know, maybe if, if you're willing to keep a secret sometimes, like there's different stuff going on, but it's been beautiful. And I think that if people want to find out, same thing with religion, which religion is true, try it. Try this, try the Jesus thing. Like try the, the Christ meditation, bring the love of Christ to your core. Ask God to reveal himself to you in that way. Like see if it works, you can try it and whatever works, stick with it. That's the beauty of our spirituality is that it's things that we can apply to our lives daily. Now, most of this other stuff, the theories and who they are, what they're coming to do. I can't get, we'll, we'll never get to the bottom of that coronavirus. What's really happening, man? What's going on? What they trying to do? We don't know, but there are things that we, we, we have rights to as sovereign humans that uh, we're connected to a higher power. There's angels, there's entities that have our greatest uh, interest in mind that we're, we can remember and connect with. And I find that very empowering. Hmm. Yeah, I think you've actually you've you've just given me a lot more depth even to the story that I shared as well, like my own understanding of it too. Because it's like, if you do the work on yourself, you know, you clean up your vibration, you clean up your energy, you 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 strive to actually make contact. I mean, you can you can. There's nothing that you can't accomplish. This is like that. Ask and you shall receive. You can meet. I mean, I've had some, some particularly interesting, you know, just meditations and visions and things as well. And like, um, even without the CE five thing and with it i mean it's just a whole nother level so have you done um, it because i haven't i haven't heard your story have you done the ce5 stuff um i have not yet and i'm very very excited to so like when i say a whole nother level too like it's kind of i feel like i'm building up for it uh i'm like i have people on my team who uh my, my writer actually has just gone deeply into it and was saying like the the amount of things that are happening around him and like bizarre phenomenon and the visions that he's experiencing yeah. are otherworldly. And so yeah. um, this, he just told me about this just in this last week, actually. And so I'm kind of like, kind of gearing up actually. I haven't, I haven't used it yet, but it went, in the past few weeks I went, I, I think I told this story recently. I might've even told it to you on our other podcast. I'm not sure, but I went, uh, for a run and I was sitting in meditation just kind of on the path and I had these like two ETs come down and start like telling me and helping me yeah. with my DNA. I don't know if I shared that yeah. one with you. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. That's yeah, great. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, yeah, I, honestly, actually, I could probably, okay, hold on. I'm just going to get it right now. What's it called? What's that? The documentary? No, no. The app, the CE5 meditation. They just search oh. CE5. Yeah, yeah. If you think if you look up the CE5 on on the story it'll come up the interesting right. thing with, with the ce5 no it excuses. makes it real it no makes more excuses. it real i have it now tell me more it makes it real like because for most of us this stuff is just theories we read about it in books we were told at church or whatever the case is and so 
And, and a lot of it is theory. And we, we go around chasing our tail. But when it becomes real for you, when you see an angel, when you see a UFO, when you see a fairy, whatever it is, it's something where that other realm crosses over. When you see a demon, like whatever it is, like, hold on, this stuff is real and we're closer to the divine than we think. And so it changes everything. And so I think the CE5 thing is like an instant way of facilitating a supernatural experience, not just going within exploring the own psyche, your own psyche, which some of that's there as well, but where they like physically show up. Like that's a huge difference of, of like going in, in a, de- a guided meditation and having those encounters, which I love and validate as well. But it's something where a being, an entity crosses over and comes into your world and more people see it. it ain't just you. Other people are like, dude, what is that? You know, and everybody gets to come together collectively and, and heaven becomes real. Angels become real. They're not just some theory that we hope when we die will be ushered over. Like they're real. They're watching over us. They're literally, they, they know what we're thinking and just this whole, but then you go deeper and deeper into the constructs of reality and how much do they know and how much do they influence us? But it makes it real, man. And that's huge. So are you saying that, when, cause I don't, you, you said you haven't done this one either, right? Oh, yeah, we've done, we've done a couple of different CE5. Uh, Greer has an old one that we did. If that's One of the guys on, on our retreat had the app, and so there's different tones and stuff. But Greer has a really long CE, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same one. It's, it works. It's just, a tuning your, it's just a guided meditation to go out and tune yourself um, to receive. And so it, it works. But you don't even need that. You just have to want to, want to see it. And go so out there with say- an open, honest heart. You don't even need the app. Like, I'm, you can go yeah. out and make connection without it. So, but yeah, that's like, I mean, though, it, with with the religion and with the uh, the grid of like, here's Jesus. Oh, this app lets them come. You know what I'm saying? Like, even that builds your expectancy. Let's listen to this meditation and get our hearts ready to receive from them. Right? Mm-hmm. You do that. It definitely helps. It, it is a heart thing. It is a consciousness thing. You have to clear your mind communicate telepathically are you out there you can say it you can look up raise your hands whatever you want to do but it, it all comes comes to play just kind of building that expectancy i think expectancy plays a huge part of it even with the reality of life of that what we believe in reveals itself to us it becomes real even if it was just for us those fairies those angels those beings in meditation like it's real even if it's just for us but it it crosses over into this reality and, uh, and you can, I feel like we will it. Like they probably wouldn't have showed up and came through unless you, a lot of stuff people film is just passing by in the night sky. But it's a difference when you go out there and you like, damn, we facilitated this. Like they came and said hello because we asked. Like it's pretty deep, man. Wow. So are you, I mean, I don't even know how to ask this then. Like, I, because I, I want to have that, as you said, the, the expectancy. Also, at the same time, practicing that, just like letting go of attachments to outcomes yeah. and expectations, sort of thing. Like, mm-hmm. there's got to be a balance there. Are you? But like, are you saying that people have actually reported they do this meditation and another, like a you know, an astral or an alien being of some kind, like literally just like phases into their room and is like, "Hello there, my name is Harold the Martian" or something. Yeah, like but that. usually I would say it, it, the majority is under the night sky, but after you have that encounter on the, and I think it's vice versa. Usually you can start wherever you like start in meditation by yourself. Hey, we're going out tonight. I have an expectancy. I want to make sure that my heart is right. My intentions are right. I want to make sure that I'm just not, you know, whatever it is, I really do feel like it's, it's an integrity thing. So whether you start um, in meditation and go out into the open sky or you start under the open sky and go into meditation to continue and facilitate that contact because I feel like it, it works both ways, but it is about a knowing I'm going to see something, something's coming. I believe in it. I'm not doubting. I receive it like a faith, like a child, childlike faith, awe and wonder. Let's see. I've heard so many people see them. Why not me? I want to say hello. And if you go out there with that intention, um, whether you're by yourself or have a group with you, I, I feel like you'll see something. I mean, there's been times we go out, we don't, you know what I'm saying? But, even if we just went out there once and we seen something, you know, we connected and it goes through meditation, telepathic communication. The majority of my, my stuff has been by myself and I've tried and then I've tried to take people with me um, and they've been able to see stuff, too. But expectancy was a was a big thing, you know, of, hey, we're going to we're going to say hello. We're going to make it happen. 
And, um, mm-hmm. you know, the meditations being at a, a high vibrational expectancy level of love that, hey, my, my heart is glowing right now. I feel like they can see that. They can read your auras. Like you said, they said that, hey, you guys smell bad. As they're traveling, they can look down and say, okay, these people are ready. You know what I mean? They'll come in and say hello. I really feel it like it works that way. Wow. It worked that way for me, and that's my expectancy. But you, it may, don't, you know, give it more than once, but expect that you're going to see it on the first time. Let's say that. Because you don't want to mm-hmm. have that doubt kick in. That, oh, it might not happen the first time. Have that expectancy that they're going to say hello tonight, you know? Okay. The next time that I have you on the podcast or that I go on your podcast, then that'll be like the first thing that we bring up. Is like, <laughs> you got to right, tell me, man. You got to post right? it. You got to let me know ASAP, like for sure. Yeah, well, ne- the next thing you know, I mean, you're, you're, <laughs> you're going to know when, I, when it happens, when I do it, because oh, yeah, I'll, go like, videos I'll, go like, I'll go like live on, on, on YouTube and be like, all right, everyone, this is my friend, Harold, the alien. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, it's so weird because a lot of us want that to happen, but it doesn't. Like we want them to like to show up. And I got friends who, I got friends who go out every night. They they, they see him every night, and they say, "Hey, look up here," and they they look up there and see him, and they're like, they want they want to be able to you know have the aliens standing next to them in their house, you know, be able to show their parents, "Hey, look who I brought." <laughs> you know, we seen what they did to ET, man. Come on, like don't do it. Like, um, but That's I mean, fair. we want it to be. We want it to be. Um, we want to be able to, you know, hand you something or they gave me an, an alien artifact or something. And we believe those stories when we hear them. And I don't know that they're necessarily true. We want it to be true. You know, I pray that people, when they hear this, I pray that they, when they hear this, it builds their faith. People listening to go out and to make contact. Guess what I did? I listened to other people's stories. I watched videos of people doing it. And guess what? My faith was, I, I'm, we're going to make it happen. And it, and it did. So I don't think that anybody's more special. I don't think Stephen Greer is more special than anybody or whoever. Um, it's just the fact that you're going out there and doing it and you can will it to happen. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, even like uh, I, I, I'm wondering what the relationship is between the, you know, potential ET encounters and the DMT, the spirit molecule. You know, even, even Rick Strassman in his work and in his book and whatnot, he, I mean, he never expected to find this out or to, you know, to make this connection when, when he started his research. But after all of the experiences and the studies and the reports that, you know, the participants had, you know, after he gave four or 500 doses of DMT out, uh, he started to make this connection of like, you know, when people have like spontaneous UFO encounters and they're reporting that they were abducted into ships or, they, you know, they, they did experiments on, on them or, you know, the ETs put something in their arm or their body or something like this <laughs> anal probes because <laughs> you know that's always a common story um it's it's like how much of that actually physically happened and how much of it was like from this higher dimension to the alien uh or the you know the other species or other worldly being or whatever you know to kind of facilitate it inside the experience of that person through yeah. the the DMT. And it might be something similar. Like if you have this experience of a, you know, an an entity like stepping into your phasing into your room, it might be just that they're not physical, but you can see them because there is this activation of DMT within your mind. And that is like the exact same experience, you know, as the near death experience as the DMT trip as the other ayahuasca, but it's happening very spontaneously and maybe in relationship to this other being that's kind of coming into your field. And that actually stimulates the DMT in the first place. I would, uh, yeah, I, I love that concept, but there's a couple, there's a couple holes in it because a lot of people would negate the UFO experiences or ghost or whatever it is to being just right. DMT being released. Joe Rogan being one of them, very much a skeptic at this point, but somebody who is for plant medicine. Um, so when the thing about it is like when you have multiple people having that same encounter, I can see like if it was just me and I DMT was releasing, oh, there's a UFO, um, and so versus a group of people looking up and seeing the UFO. I had a, I had an encounter that um, would have easily been, been able to explain away. Um, I don't know if I told you, I stole, I stole from a warlock when I was a teenager. I stole from a bunch of people, but I, I, I stole from this guy who was really deep in magic and uh, he had a protection spell on his belongings and the entity came to collect, got his stuff and brought it back, which was through another person to know who got it. They went, all these witches went to the back and did this ritual on me. And um, me and my cousin left this house where all these people were. And we go 
to go stay with my girlfriend, we get dropped off down the street from my house and we're standing at the edge of the bushes getting ready to run to her tree house to spend the night. We didn't want to be caught. Sun was starting to go down, go around the edge of the bushes. And out of nowhere, this big entity appears. It's an eight foot tall. It looks like a camel. And it runs past me and my cousin. Both sc- It screams and knocks us both down on the ground screams and then disappears in the thin air it was it was darker than the blackest of night scared the hell out of us we just ran into these warlocks and pissed them off they put a spell on us they knew how to do elemental magic and summon entities and so if that was to happen just to me i could easily explain it away i tripped it was a shadow i don't know what it was but when you have the fact that my cousin was there and we both had this happen knock both of us down was like a testament, like, hey, something happened and we both experienced this together versus like, oh, maybe you caught a contact buzz off of the weed that was there or whatever was going on like, or you were drinking. Um, it, McKenna said this, and this was the interesting thing. Terrence McKenna said, talking about UFOs, he says that the difference that we have in the um, drug community that you and the UFO community don't have is that he was touting, we have repeatability. We can take a hit of LSD, we can do magic mushrooms, ayahuasca, and we can go meet with these entities. You and the UFO were just kind of like spur of the moment it happened. Well, the difference is, again, you talk about they never seen where we are today. The CE5 initiative is the repeatability, is to go out and make contact. And it is our repeatability that wasn't going on when McKenna was around. So that's the interesting thing with it. So there are these different ways that people are connecting with these entities on the other side and um, especially the beings of love and light and those kind of things, which we champion, we tell other people and they would do it and repeat it and it works. Yeah. Wow. Um, man. Okay. Hold on. I have to go back. <laughs> there was something that I really wanted to ask you about all of this. Um, oh yes. Okay. So I wanted to clarify actually first regarding mm-hmm. the DMT thing, because uh I spoke about the DMT as if it's like, oh, DMT is really, so you, you know, you see this this entity or whatnot. Um, but my experience of, of and, and also all the research that I've done, reading DMT, the spirit molecule, going to all these ayahuasca ceremonies and stuff like that, yeah. has shown me that what I feel is, is, you know, in my heart and my knowing and everything, is that the DMT is just like, like a like a biological pair of glasses that allows you to perceive other dimensions so it's mm-hmm. not like it's you know because even the even the oh, there's a lot of scientists uh doing research today that suggests and putting out theories that suggest that your thoughts your feelings are a morphogenic field that expands beyond you right so when i'm saying like you know you have this dmt in your brain and then you're seeing this alien it's not like it's just all this little inside of your head projector even rick strassman in dmt the spirit molecule he was like there's no way that I can quantify that this is all inside of your brain. Like the experiences that people are having like this, you know, and this recurring thing of meeting these aliens or having these things. It's like, I just don't see how that could be like some subconscious childhood trauma playing out in your, it just doesn't make sense. So the, the DMT when that's released and however it's released, whether it's through an injection or you smoke it, or you're having a near death experience or you're dreaming or, or maybe it's an ET encounter of some kind. I feel are all just like your your body, your brain, your mind putting on these sort of psychic glasses for a moment and suddenly you're like perceiving the other dimensional realities that are around you. So mm-hmm. if you're seeing an alien that, you know, phases into your room and maybe he's not physical, but you can still see him, like it's just because those glasses are on, you can perceive that he's there or she's there or this being is, you know, appearing into your reality. But it's very interesting to, to hear you say that Joe Rogan is a skeptic, that DMT is... Uh, that is, you know, all inside of your head. I've never heard that from him before, but I, I yes, just hear him talking about it a lot. Linking the UFO thing uh, that people, you know, it's mm-hmm. these backwoods people in Alabama. But hey, that's where I am, who are having these UFO encounters, and uh, and he was just saying how there's really no proof and stuff, and so um, that they could have just got a, a release of DMT that facilitates some type of magical dream-like experience where you thought you saw a ghost or you saw Aunt Shirley or whatever or a UFO. So I think, again, when it's a collective of people having those experiences, whether it is a ghost, whatever it may be, that more people see it, I think it adds to the validity. And um, But no, I'm, I'm with you. There's something that happens 
whether it's before or after, whether you position yourself to do kundalini yoga, to do breath work, to raise your vibration, which in turn stimulates the third eye pineal gland to release DMT, you know, to go into that dream state. To, we're literally hacking the dream state, right? Where all of this stuff happens in the imagination. We're hacking it. We're using it as goggles, if you will. Like you said, there's a lot of movies that would talk about once you have these goggles, put them on and you can see in the spirit, you can see things that aren't there. I, I very much believe in that. So whether you are um, doing that work, you know, facilitating a, a, a deep meditation, I mean, that you started and, you, and they came and said hello because they knew you were doing that or they were there and because of their art field or whatever it is kind of like uh, spark that in you or give you that DMT release that now you can see them because they're there. However it works, I think there's some, some validity to that um, being able to, to see them and, uh, and communicate whether it's just a passerby that you just, I mean, it's definitely like your, your body is uh is in tune to pick up on those frequencies like there's a reason why when there's an entity a ghost or something resonates with your spirit that your the hairs on your arms stand up and the hairs on the back of your necks that you are a spirit antenna you, your hair like it, it is an extension of your central nervous system and you can tell when they're around the energy shifts the room gets cold you can tell when they're around so even that there are different ways to know like hey synchronicities, whatever it is, and ask, step out. Is there something here? Everybody asks, like, they ask me, they have all these questions about beings in the middle of the night, and I heard this noise, and something's calling my name in the middle of the night. What do I do? What is it? Is it this? You got to ask it. <laughs> I can't tell you what it is, but it's up to you to facilitate and say, hey, what's your name? There's a, there's a story in the, in the Bible where um, Samuel was being woke up every night by somebody yelling his name. He thought that it was uh, um, the prophet Eli, I believe it was, in the next room. He's like, what do, you, what do you want? He's like, I didn't call you. You're calling me. He goes back to bed. He calls his name. What do you want? Why are you calling my name? He's like, listen, next time you hear it, say, hey, who is it? What, what is it? And so it was God trying to get his attention and it was giving him dreams and stuff. And it was literally hearing his name called. I mean, a, a, that's the Bible. We want to negate that. But listen, that stuff still happens today. You're about to fall asleep and somebody yells your name. What the hell? Like I've totally had that something. You, and so it's up to you to facilitate that. Yes. Hello. People waking up at three thirty three, like all in the morning, in the morning. Like, what do you do? Do you go back to sleep? Intercessory prayer. They believe and, and, and the Christian mystics believe that the veil between the spirit world and our, and our reality is very thin. It's called the witching hour. You know this. And so there's times that they believe that the Christians would believe that God was calling them to, to pray for people and put things on their hearts that, they, that there was more that they were almost closer to God or that God would hear their prayers more or the angels or whatever. And so it's interesting, but the, 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 uh, Sacred text, the Bible for me, that's, you know, my book that I've tore up. I studied that thing. All of these things are in there. The, the, the hair on the arm standing up. I got that from the Bible and in my own life of waking up in an entity being in the room. But I'm reading the Bible. And again, these things that nobody would ever share from the pulpit are talking about waking up and seeing a ghost at the edge of your bed, telepathically communicating a message to you. That's in the Bible. And now when we talk about it, we're said, oh, you're, you're new agers or it's demonic. Don't listen. It wasn't demonic when they did it. Or why is it demonic when we do it? So taking back our birthright and these, you know, these stories, man, are there for a reason. And it echoes not just the scriptures through all of the ancient cultures as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, bringing this, bringing this conversation to the back to like, you know, it was a while ago. I was like, I want to ask you about this whole like, you know, healing and clearing out the demonic and everything like that. And we've kind of touched on this again here in this moment is is like besides i suppose you know asking these angels and other beings for support like what do you see as is necessary in really the purification of the human body of consciousness like healing uh ourselves removing or you know releasing however the right terminology is you know these demons and these entities from our from our auric field from our body yeah. of consciousness like yeah in your estimation um what's it going to take Plug in my book. This is a, <laughs> uh, 
I, I call it, and this gets me in trouble with the new age community because I use the word God. I use sovereignty of God. So they're like, okay, this is a religious book. And then the Christians would see some of the icon. But what I believe, and I go into detail in the book, what that sovereignty is, is that these beings exist. I believe that they have roles. I believe that they are created and that they have jobs to do. When I say that the lower, the, you got to have a cleanup crew. You got to have, like, even in, in the earth, when you take a dead animal and you just leave it on side the road, guess who comes? The cleaning up crew. If you have some old, a piece of candy that you dropped out of the car and it just sits there, guess who comes? The cleanup crew. This happens. If you, if you cheat, if you lie, if you steal, this happens. If you t- touch your hand in a fire, you get burned. So these entities, these reactions that, that we feel that, that are not, we don't think that they're beautiful. We call them demons. We want to stay away from them. They have a job to do and they do their job very well. And so there's things that we're warned against that if we do that, we open up ourselves to these things, drug addiction, uh, alcoholism, um, spousal abuse, whatever it is. There's so many things that have like these repercussions that come with them. And, and when you do those things, energetically, you align with the entities that are associated with that level of vibration. So for, for the, the, the lower level stuff, you're going to see the, the lower level cleanup crew. They're here. They got a job to do. Hey, you called. There's a way. There's, so doing the healing and, and walking and hire, you got to learn from these guys. And they're always there. Hey, I'm coming back. The next time you do that, I'm coming back. I will see you again if you, but listen, respond with love. Learn from your mistakes. They're only there because they had a, a, a perfect uh, place to, to, to meet with you on. They can't ascend to the higher levels of vibration. Once you ascend higher and you're learning from your mistakes, you're responding with love. That's how you heal. There is no uh, meditation and breath work that doesn't come without you doing the inner work, walking in forgiveness, blessing those who curse you, uh, forgiving your parents, forgiving your past, making peace with your past, making peace with your future, making peace with the present. Walking in love is how we heal. And that's how we elevate to the, the higher levels of density in consciousness, in your own consciousness, in life, about you attracting higher level entities in your life. If you're doing bad stuff, listen, when I was in witchcraft and I robbed the damn warlock, listen, we were jumping people. We were in the gang activity. We we're doing whatever drugs and pills we can get our hand on. And I was mixing occultism in with it. When I reached into the other side, I got to meet those entities that were associated with the things that I were do, what was doing. They were there. I just couldn't see them. Going back to what you just said, they were there. And once I did these meditations and opened up through this certain chanting on some demonic lower level stuff, I got to see them. And it wasn't pleasant. Almost killed me. Barely made it out. Um, but now, as I've done the inner work, I've found my inner healing. I'm walking in the light. Now, when I tap in through very similar practices, breath work and things like that, I'm greeted by the higher density beings. But the, those bad guys are still there. Don't blame them. They're just doing their job. Don't kill the messenger, if you will. They, they, if you do this, they come. If you do that, they come. If you bless people, if you're trying to help people, if you're going out of your way to, to uh, counteract the, the negative in, in the darkness in the world, listen, there are beings that are here to assist you because they're trying to do it too. They need a physical body here to do the work that they, they, that they want to do. All you got to do is say yes. And so whether we're seeing them in uh, CE5 initiatives or we're going in deep meditation, we're able to see these beings who are assisting in the healing. It's all about us doing that inner work, man. And those demons and devils, don't demonize them. They're your friends. I would never, even though like while I was going through it, take it. I barely made it out. So a lot of people don't. I did, but I'm thankful. My relationship with them isn't, hey man, get away from me. I'm, my relationship is thank you. And now I have a contrast. Now I know what the depths of, of the darkness looks like. And I also know what the, the beauty of what I call Christ, the highest light in the world looks like. And I get to pick each day, which vibration, which entity, what I want to do to, to, to create this life that I want for myself. And trust me, it's, it's <laughs> tapping into the higher beautiful frequencies, but I think that they have jobs. Mm. Wow. That was actually, that was very inspiring. Yeah. Thank you. And I think thank you too, on behalf of everyone listening, like you've really brought some amazing conversations here to this, um, you know, open space here, this forum of, of communication and, and wisdom and learning. So thank you so much. 
Thanks for having me, man. I enjoy connecting with you in this space and allowing me to share my truth and my story. And I hope it resonates and inspires everyone listening, you know, to, to seek their truth and, and see what works for them. Find the modality and just do it. You know, you can keep seeking, keep studying, never stop, but find one that you can apply to your life today and tap into that meditation, that breath work, that prayer, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So um, before, before we wrap this thing up, um, if anybody wants to tune in to you, how can they find you? Uh, find you? Yeah, um, they can go to my website, truthseeka.com, truth, S-E-E-K-A-H.com. My, everything I do there, I do, I do a little bit of it all. I do spiritual, esoteric hip hop, guided meditations that are recorded that are like a journey in and of itself with sound effects, bunch of cool stuff. Uh, my podcast I do every week. Check out the interview that me and Jordan did. Bunch of really cool people. So everything you can find at truthseeker.com. And um, my my community wants to know when when we're going to see Truth Seeker in an episode of Spirit, Spirit Science or how we can get a Truth Seeker avatar. <laughs> That's what they've all been saying. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be awesome. They're all asking for that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's talk about it. Let's let's do a I spiritual mean, hip hop episode for sure. What would be? Yeah. Well, that that would be the thing. Like, what would be the episode to talk about? What? And I I mean I I think like the subjects, some of the things that you've touched on here, like even just Christian mysticism or like mysticism in the Bible, uh, could yeah, be a really sure. cool thing. So if you you and I want to collaborate on like a script about that, uh, we definitely could uh, could co create an episode for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot that people don't know. And it's uh, such an honor to to bring it to the table and uh, to just to bring something out. And it's not even a definite truth or to undo um, or or to tear down what anyone believes. It's just to show them that, look, this stuff is in there and it's been under your nose the whole time. Again, I can give you chapter and verses and and stories where literally Jesus is meeting with his, his elders that came before him and all throughout the scriptures. And it's really beautiful. It's encouraging. You know what I'm saying? That that this stuff, this mysticism is in the Bible and it's been there the whole time. It's encouraging to me. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much again for joining here. And uh, let's just touch base on email or on Facebook or something and figure out our script and how we're going to do it. But um, yeah. And in the CE5, you got to let me know for sure. Oh, hundred percent. It's on, it's on the thing. Probably do it later today or on. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it's going to happen. So thank you again awesome. for, for this amazing podcast, dude, as always, hey, it's a pleasure. And thanks everyone for listening. Many blessings. Many blessings. 